a normal car like this is strong because the two ends are connected together by a roof and a floor, two pieces of metal. Now, if you take the roof away, you end up with the big heavy engine here connected to the steering and suspension gubbins there by just the floor. That's like having two bricks joined together by a playing card. It's going to be all wobbly. To get round the problem, Audi has fitted the Spider with lots of strengthening beams. Now that sounds fine, but it's added 100 kilograms to the weight. Porsche, meanwhile, offers the turbo with active engine mounts, which make the engine part of the car's backbone. Sounds intriguing, but has it worked? In a word, yes. This is a million times better than the old 911 turbo convertible. Mind you, that isn't saying much, because other things that are a million times nicer than the old car include tuberculosis and being on fire, stuff like that. However, even though it is a big improvement, it is heavier than the coupe, and despite everything, it's still not as rigid. And just knowing that, it sort of spoils everything. So, what about the Audi? The hardtop R8 V10 was one of the best cars I drove last year. And actually, in one important respect, this is even better. That noise. With no roof, you can hear it even more clearly. Oh! <laughs> the only sound I can think of which is better than that is the sound of Peter Mandelson being attacked by bears. With that noise going on, it's very hard to detect the shimming and you really don't notice the extra weight. Really, it's like driving a car that has chlamydia. There are no symptoms, but you know it's there, and that sort of spoils the relationship a bit. On the track, then, both are good but you get the sense that neither is as good as it could be. So what about practical stuff, such as what big speed convertibles like these can do if you have big hair? Now, ideally, to demonstrate this, we need James May, but sadly, he's busy today building a nuclear submarine out of Lego, probably. So instead, we've got someone who looks just like him, except for in every single detail. This is Lauren. She spent all morning having her hair done, and now we're going to see how it's affected by her driving the Audi. Was it um, an expensive haircut? Yeah. This is probably how you imagine things will be if you have a convertible supercar. The smell of the scenery, groove armada in the stereo, and a James May body double by your side. But the whole point of this car is speed, and that changes everything. In just two minutes, I turned Lauren into a pop star from the 1980s. The Audi, then, not a good hairstylist. Sadly, our attempts to see if the Porsche was any better ended prematurely. My eye. No, no, listen, a bee, a bee went in it. This kid, no, the thing in my nose has a face. So there we are, set off for a weekend away with your wife in either of these cars, and you'll arrive blind and with Bonnie Tyler in the passenger seat. Naming a winner, then, between these two cars is not that easy, because, frankly, they both lose. So what you're 
you're saying is they both lose. They both lose, yeah, because the R8, the hardtop, and the 911 hardtop, they're like poached halibut. 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 <laughs> now, if you put HP sauce on delicious poached halibut, OK, you're going to ruin it. If you put HP sauce on a bacon sandwich, you're going to make it better. You are quite odd, you know. It that, makes perfect sense. I mean, it does really make weird. sense. Yeah, I, th I think I sort of know what you're getting at because if you take the roof of an ordinary car, like a Peugeot or a BMW 1 series or something, yeah. no harm done. Absolutely. And if anything, you make it a bit better because there's a bit of drama. Quite. But with serious performance cars. Halibut. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's a different story. I mean, yeah. there, are, there are good reasons why there's never been a Eurofighter Typhoon cabriolet. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> purpose, and that's. And having cleared that up, we must yeah. now find how fast these cars go around our track. And that, of course, means handing them over to our tame racing driver. Some say that he spent all week daydreaming about what Rubens Maricello would look like in a ham slicer. <laughs> and that he's. Terrified the BBC will reveal his salary because he's paid in strong pornography. <laughs> All we know is he's called the Stig. Yeah. And they're off. Stig fueled by his fanatical hatred of Rubens Barrichello. Uh, powering down toward the first corner. Here they are. And the Audi looks like it's getting a bit out of shape already. Yes, it is. Stig seems to have developed an obsession with the Bee Gees. Perhaps it's because they, they share a love of the white suit. Around Chicago, both dipping a wheel off the track. Now hammerhead, Stig stamping on the brakes, imagining it's the head of a Williams driver. Not Nico Hulkenberg, obviously. Uh, 911's can understeer, but no sign of it there at all. The Audi's in good shape, too. I should say the, uh, the Stig also dislikes convertible supercars because he always tries to keep his helmet out of the flies. Or whatever. Uh, I've just, uh, just realised if these two go faster than their hardtop equivalents, I'm going to look like a massive idiot. Uh, they've just got Gambon to do now, both round, and there we are across the line. Come on, then, so. No pressure. Here we go. Hang no on. pressure. The Porsche 911 turbo convertible did it in one 22.2 seconds, which, which is there. Fast. Well, hang on, where's the hardtop? We've never tested the hardtop. Which is lucky for you, because yes. if this was fast... Oh, we have done a hardtop Audi R8, though it's here. Well, yes. If this is faster than that, you are going to look, well, by your own admission, a massive idiot. Yes, I am. Go on, then. Uh, one twenty one six. Yeah. The convertible. Yeah. One twenty two three. Oh, 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 oh